Welcome to Studio Lighting Techniques in Maxwell Render. My name is James Coleman and I'm the Maxwell Render Mentor at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology. Welcome back to part 4. In this video I'll be looking at my basic setup in slightly more detail. And the first thing I'd like to do is to show you what I've done with this scene since we last left it. But just before that, let me show you the fire options in the interactive preview. I'm going to be using the interactive preview almost constantly from now on, so I need to make sure that my options are set up OK. So in the interactive preview window, I'm going to click Options and Settings to have a look. So these are the settings for the interactive preview, and what this means is that the sampling level is set at 10, so the interactive preview will run until it reaches the sampling level of 10 unless it runs for 60 seconds, in which case it will stop at 60 seconds. And this is purely to preserve CPU. And the quality is linked to the anti-aliasing. A quality of 5 is a good trade-off. Obviously putting quality down will increase the speed of the interactive preview, but the anti-aliasing won't be as good. These are my default settings and they work for me. So now we can go on. OK, so I've added some objects here in the Objects Manager and this will make the scene a little bit more useful. So before I go any further, I'm going to turn on Fire to make sure that my preview is active. And I'm going to go to my close-up camera by double-clicking on it. So this is the diffuse knot which we imported in an earlier video. And the purpose of using a diffuse material is so that I can easily see the overall effect that my lighting is having on diffuse surfaces. But I've also cloned the knot by right-clicking and clone. And I've made a reflective knot. And this will allow me to see the reflections of the light and the effect that the lighting will have on reflective surfaces and I can turn these objects on and off, I can hide them or make them visible with this icon here. So I can turn off the diffuse knot and turn on the reflective and now I can see the reflections of the emitters in my scene. I could have created a material which is both diffuse and reflective. For example, I could apply a coating to my diffuse material but by using two different materials it gives me the most amount of freedom. For the reflective material, all I did was clone the diffuse material by selecting it and right clicking it and clone material and then if I open up the reflective material, again by double clicking on it, you can see that I've adjusted the roughness to 0 to make it reflective and I've adjusted the ND to 30 to minimise reflective fall off and make sure that the material reflects light evenly. I'm going to close that down. If I turn off my reflective knot, you can also see that I've imported some primitives and this was done purely by File, Library, Objects, Primitives and there are a cube, a cylinder and a sphere and just make sure you import them and don't just open them because that will close your current scene. And then like I did before with my other objects, I just scaled them and moved them into position. These primitives will help me to see the effect that my lighting setup is having on the scene. I have the cube, so I have flat surfaces. I have the cylinder, so I have a surface with curvature in one dimension. And I have the sphere, so I have a surface with curvature in two dimensions. One reason that I use the knot as my other test object is because it's a nice complex shape where you can see lots of lighting effects. Like with my knot, I've made diffuse and reflective primitives. And to group them, all you have to do is to select them all in the Objects Manager, click, hold shift, click again, and then right click and group. You'll be asked to provide a group name, and in this case I've called them diffuse primitives and reflective primitives for obvious reasons. Now on to the main adjustment that I've made to this scene and the purpose of this video. You can see in the Objects Manager that I've cloned the planes and then hidden the clone and applied the diffuse material to the clone. And I've done this for all the emitters, top, right and left. This then allows me to use the new planes as reflectors, which I'll now try to explain. In my current setup, I've got three planes around my studio constantly emitting light onto the scene. This is called direct lighting. Light is being emitted from the planes directly onto the subject. However, in this particular setup, because light is coming from the left, the top and the right, the overall effect is very, very even and sometimes this can result in a lack of contrast because there are no very dark areas. To get around this, sometimes in photography, photographers will take away one of these emitters and in this case, if I turn off the right emitter, you can see that this side of the knot becomes darker than it was before because there's now no light coming from the right hand side. And if I go to the close-up camera, you can see the effect more prominently. As I turn on and off the right emitter, you can see the change in lighting. Now there is only light coming from the top on the left hand side. But if I go back to my overview, now there's a very strong contrast between the light coming from the top and the left. 
and the no light coming from the right. To get around this, what we can do is activate our right reflector. And now what's happening is light is being emitted from the left hand emitter and the top emitter. And some of it's going directly onto the scene, but some of it is hitting the right reflector and bouncing back onto the scene. And the effect that you get, if I go back to the close-up view, is that the right reflector reintroduces some light on the right hand side of the scene. It's not as much as it would be if the right emitter was visible, but it's enough to reintroduce some light and reduce the contrast slightly. And now if I alternate the right reflector between hidden and visible, you can see the effect that it's having on the scene. It's only subtle in the diffuse knot, but if I turn on the reflective knot, you can see the effect is quite prominent in reflections, especially up here. Due to the way I've set this scene up, I can pick and choose between which planes are emitters, which are reflectors, and which are not there at all, by simply picking between visible and hidden, so I can quickly see the different effects that this gives me. For example, I could turn off the left and the right completely. So now my scene is just lit from the top, and then if that's too dark for me, I can turn on the left reflector and the right reflector to catch the light which would otherwise fall out of the scene and have it bounce back in. And in some cases, even just having a one single light over the top is too overall for the scene requirements and you need to introduce more contrast into the scene. So what I could do is turn off the left reflector, turn on the left emitter, but then turn off the top emitter and activate the reflector instead. Now I've got a scene where there's only one emitter and there's lots of contrast between the left side and the right side, but not as much contrast as there would be if I didn't have the top and right reflectors. One other trick you can do in order to really reduce the contrast in your scene is have a front reflector to catch the light that would otherwise fall out of the scene. So I'm going to turn on my right and top emitters again, and this is a front reflector that I made earlier. And When I turn it on, you'll see the difference it makes in the scene. Now the knot is very, very evenly lit, because it's lit from the left, the top and the right, and behind it and in front of it and underneath it are reflectors bouncing light back onto it. And in this particular scene, there is no light escaping. To make this front reflector, all I did was clone the top reflector and then move it into place. But I also had to make it hidden from camera, because otherwise it would block the view of the object. And all I did to do that is, with it selected, go to Object Parameters and enable Hidden from Camera. If I uncheck hidden from camera, I just get a black scene because the plane is blocking all of my light. So I need to enable hidden from camera again. The downside of using this technique is that now this scene will take a longer to render because there's no light escaping and it's all been contained in this box. And also, this setup couldn't physically exist in the real world because there is no way that you could have a material which is diffuse on one side in order to reflect light back into the scene and transparent on the other in order to allow the camera to see the subject. So this does not represent a real world setup which is what I'm trying to replicate. Thanks very much for watching and in the next video I'll be talking about how to finally control exactly how much light a reflector reflects back into a scene. For more information about support, consultation and mentoring in CAD and Maxwell Render at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology, email maxwellrenderbrightoncdt at gmail.com.